What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they're out of Milton, Delaware, and this is their Nordic Spring, and this is a part of their Off-Centered Art Series. So they're calling this one an IPA, and on the label it says Al Brewed with Orange Peels, Juniper Needles, and Berries. It comes in at 6.5% alcohol by volume, 45 IBUs at the time of review. This can is just under two months old. So we have another beer from Dogfish Head that I am going to review, and it sounds very interesting. Um, you're talking about an IPA that is brewed with orange peels, juniper needles, and berries, and they're also using the Norwegian yeast Kvike. So very interested to see what this one is like. So we'll crack it open and get it into the glass. I'm using somewhat of the hashtag proper glassware. It's a Dogfish Head uh, you know, IPA glass. I will say the there will be hashtag Dirty Glass Mafia at the bottom because it's very hard to clean this glass at the bottom. So um, every time I say that, though, it never happens. But I'm feeling today it's going to happen, so we will see if that is the case or not. So, I like this glass uh, to some degree, using it. I hate washing it, <laughs> but using it's fun. Um, let's see, Dirty Glass Mafia at the bottom, ah, it's not too bad. This is super hazy. For some reason, I didn't expect this to uh, be hazy, even though when I did like the uh, Shelfie beer uh, review vlog, or yeah, the vlog that I do at the beginning of the month to show you the shelfy beers I'm reviewing, I called this a hazy IPA, and I was like, ah, it just says IPA, not hazy. Well, it is a hazy IPA. Yeah, that looks like orange juice. Um, this glass is always crazy because the lower it goes, the uh, less dark it is. So on camera, it's probably going to look all the same. In person, though, down here, it's more of like a hazy yellow, and then up here, it's more hazy, like honey orange. Um, yeah, can't see through it. Murky turbid. It has about a two-finger of a soap sudsy, uh, fluffy-looking head. But yeah, that looks like soap suds at the top. Yeah, you can't really see through it at all. Down here at the bottom, a little bit more than the top. Anyway, let's get a nose. Ooh, big pine. Yeah, huge pine. Uh, there is a nice, like, orange aroma, a tangerine, maybe from the orange peels, maybe from just the hops. I don't know what hops they're using. I didn't look them up. I probably should have. But yeah, it smells like a nice hazy. It has sweeter citrus tones. Uh, there's a little bit of, like, a stone fruit, like a peach and a mango. Maybe a touch of a pineapple. But there's a big blast of pine, so it has like old school kind of feel to it, but then with the new school hazy kind of influence. And the juniper needles and berries, I don't know if that's accentuating the pine or like the kind of floral aroma to this one. But yeah, it smells pretty good. Yeah, floral, pine, there's citrus, there's tropical notes, smells a bit sweeter. Yeah, let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Mouthfeel is really nice. The body, though, definitely thin as I took that first sip. Body's like a bit under medium. So 6.5%, I'd like to see it approaching medium or right around medium. So it's a little bit thin. The mouthfeel, though, it has a nice, soft, smooth characteristic to it. It's not necessarily creamy, but it's definitely soft kind of in the realm of you look at a beer like this and it's a hazy IPA. I think the mouthfeel is somewhat appropriate. I'd like to see a little bit more creamy, but I'm fine with it. The taste isn't, the taste is subdued. It's nuanced, it's a bit lighter. And I can actually taste a little bit of the base malt, which is nice as a lower ABV IPA. And I like that, same thing what happens in pale ales. Certainly hazy pale ales and IPAs, I do like that. There's a little bit of like a bready, crackery malt sensation. But yeah, right at the front of the palate, that's what I'm hit with that malt character, it dives underneath the palate. Right after that, there's orange or tangerine. It encompasses the whole fruit. So they say orange peels, they're brewing it with. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, but then there's a juicy orange. There's a little bit of like a zesty orange, but definitely orange and tangerine. As it continues on, it's a little bit of like a under-ripened peach, a little bit of like a ripened mango, stone fruit heavy, touch of pineapple, something in that realm, maybe even like a very slight honeydew melon. So the fruit characteristics are very nice on this one. Then about halfway to two-thirds of the way through the palate, the pine hits. And I think what are the juniper ber uh, berries, I'm getting like a floral pine kind of finish. This finish is semi-dry. This has a mild bitterness. It's not too bitter, but it finishes with a piney floral kind of um, uh, mild bitterness. 
6.5% hides the alcohol extremely well. Very easy to drink. This is extreme. This is, dare I say, a crushable beer, 6.5%. Even with the ingredients, they don't overwhelm the base beer, which is a very nice, just like hazy IPA. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just really good. I would say this is a really, really solid to good beer. That's what there. It's what I mean. I'm not losing my shit over this one. And maybe I was hoping for a little bit more of the characteristics of um, the additives or adjuncts or whatever you want to call them here. But maybe not. Maybe I just want the nuanced, subtle kind of feel of those, uh, you know, of the orange peel and the juniper. Um, but at the end of the day, like I could drink a decent amount of this. So uh, rating on uh, Nordic Spring, a part of their off-centered art series from a dogfish head. I have absolutely no issues giving this a low four out of five. I'll go 3.95. This is a nice beer. This is a nice, dare I say, shelfy beer. You're going to be able to find this one if you get dogfish head pretty much wherever you see dogfish head, you probably should see this. Maybe not though. You know, that's, that's how uh, availability is nowadays. But if you see dogfish head, I would imagine it's going to show up. This is kind of like their spring seasonal or late winter season or whatever you want to call it. And a price point on this one, I paid $2.29 for a single can. I think I want to say, I want to say six packs for 12 to $13. It was like 12, it was like $11.99 or $12.99. Again, for a nice beer like this, again, a well-made hazy IPA with some different characteristics, but not over the top. I think they did a pretty good job with it. 6.5%. It hides the alcohol quite well. This would be a nice beer, maybe a session on it on a Saturday or a Sunday week or whatever day you have off. You wouldn't get, you know, absolutely shit-faced if you drank a six-pack of this over the course of like a, you know, afternoon into evening. And I think if you appreciate hazy beers, I don't see how you would dislike this one, but I could be wrong. So if you've had this one before, post in the comments section. Let me know what you thought about this one because this is relatively new. Even though this is just under two months old, they do give a Best Buy date of June of 2023 on the bottom of the can. So you have about you know three and a half, four months to drink this one according to Dogfish Head. And I think this will hold up probably at least for a couple more months. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.